The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, I'm going to call our meeting of um, February 24th to order. Uh, at this meeting, the commission will hold hearings on notices of intent, requests for determination of activability. The commission will also be voting on decisions that and taking up other business. No hearing times have been assigned to the specific agenda items, and the commission will take them up in the order they are listed. Discussion items and action items may be taken up at any time. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order, suspending provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting online. The commission welcomes participation in the meeting by the applicants and general public. Attending the meeting tonight are seven Conservation Commission members, Eric Fowley, Margaret Wheeler, Jim Gazzo, Ian Jeffries, Marilyn Frank, Noel Donovan, and Peter Mahler, and Matt Salem, the Conservation Resource Planner. This meeting is record being recorded by Westside Cable Access TV. We respectfully ask that everyone mute their computer microphones and phones when they are not in use to avoid unnecessary noise during the meeting. This is an open meeting, so for all panelists who have access to the chat panel, please only use chat for technical issues related to the video conference. Commissioner will proceed by opening the agenda items, having the applicant or the respective representative present the project, or if previously opened in a public meeting, they will provide a brief summary of the project. The commission and staff will follow with the questions and they will open it up to the public for questions and comments. At this point, if you wish to participate, you will raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted for you to participate. Due to the limitations of the platform, attendees that are accessing the meeting via the telephone number at the top of the agenda will only be able to listen to the proceedings and will not be able to contribute. Please access the video conference via the link on the agenda, even if you do not have a web webcam to participate. I'll take a roll call. Eric? Here. Jim? Here. Marilyn? Here. Margaret? Here. Ann? Here. And Noel? Here. Great. Okay, our first uh, agenda right is, is open forum. Members of the commission have anything for open forum? None? Okay, I know Matt has a couple of things. I do. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, first, the RFP for the management services at the uh, up at Hill Orchard was released last Friday. There's a pre proposal meeting this Friday. Um, any interested respondents should go to the town's website for the bid doc, uh, for the doc, bid documents um, secondly um, the it is budget season and uh, general government services which um, conservation um, falls under will be on the finance committee and select board joint meeting next Thursday um, and in regards to the budget uh, we've been asked to reduce the contracted services of the land management budget by 10,000 um, that is used to pay for the Hill Orchard um, the Hill Orchard manager um, the Beaver Solutions uh, devices throughout town and also um, a portion of the property manager up at uh, East Boston camps. Um, so with the revolving account, I think the funds are above 141,000. Um, we, we, we should be able to cover that this year. Um, in my response to um, the town manager and the finance director, um, we're, we're, we're willing to help out you know with the ten thousand dollar reduction but we're we don't want that to be seen as a uh to be an annual reduction um because again it is it it is that that money coming out of the operating budget is used for you know various management um various managers to pay for various managers um and last but not least um, with regards to the conservation restrictions at um, Timberlake and uh, another one of the ones Carol was working on with uh, where the town is the property owner and the Con Western Conservation Trust are the um, CR holders. Um, a little bit of language has been discussed. Uh, first is in terms of the permitted um, uh, prohibited uses 
and uh, the West Food Conservation Trust has a concern about any commercial, any commercial, commercial or de minimis commercial use of the property. Um, and I wanted to get the commission's feeling as to uh, uh, the language in the conservation restriction is the boilerplate language from the state um, conservation restriction. Um, Westford Conservation Trust had some, and in discussions they've been understanding, but they've, it, I wanted to get the commission's feeling as to whether we should um, resume with, incur with the, um, on the basis that this is the state's conservation restriction language and um, it, it, we're, we're trying to keep it as uh, similar to that as possible. Um, and secondly, they had some concerns about hunting and trapping on the property. Um, and in terms of as, as a permissive use with uh, authorization by the grantor, um, we might be, if, the, if it's uh, satisfactory to, to the commission, we'd be looking to include it as hunting and trapping would be permissive with authorization by the grantor and grantee. So both the Conservation Commission and the Conservation Trust, which is a again a slight deviation from the state's um, boilerplate conservation restriction, but um, we can. Um, but I think that would be something, especially where there are four cons the four conservation con uh, restrictions that Carol are, are are working on right now. Um, we're just trying to figure out the language and the commission's mm -hmm. feelings. Um, we, 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 we've never restricted a, a CR like that before as far as hunting, hunting and uh, on property. I mean, we, we've done a bunch of these before. I mean, we, we, we've never let the, we've never let the CR holder decide if, if, if they will allow hunting on a, on a conservation uh, parcel. I know Jim probably has feelings about this. Yeah, it's because I wasn't part of that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what I you can guys never remember a time when we restricted it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure why. I mean, why, why does the conservation trust all of a sudden want to put their language into the CR instead of just going with the standard template? Uh, I can reach out to um, Dave Evanson and the conservation trust and have him on for uh, the next meeting to, for to okay. better explain it. Um, if that's um, if that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm just I'm concerned about you know not not allowing hunting if we decide we decide that particular parcel is overrun with deer and needs to be you know needs to be harvested that we you know that, that's my concern. I'm 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 willing to hear what their concern is in regards to commercial activity because I would have never assumed that any commercial activity could take place on the property. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? I just yeah. want to see the wording that they're worried about there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's all I have for open forum. Okay. And Mr. Chair, there's a uh, Bill Harmon has his hand raised. If yeah, you're looking to take yeah. comments from the public right yeah, now. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, call him, Bill. Quick comment. I think the, the form of a CR from the state is not intended to be recommended, but intended to be to list uh, issues that then should be addressed. So, so, so uh, I think instead of viewing it as a recommendation to the state, it's just that they, the state is raising the issue, and it's okay to either include that point or not. That's my understanding of it. Okay, yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, we have some we have concerns about you know limiting hunting on a on a on a on a public parcel like this. That's all. I mean, we've never we've never limited hunting. Uh, with a CR before, basically, uh, except for maybe EBC, which really isn't. Right, you know. EBC. It was with. Uh, it, it's still allowed, but only with um, um, in consultation with a, a you know a, a state biologist or something like that for uh, oh, over, like you said, yeah. Peter, for run yeah. species, high high densities, those kind of things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Matt, I wanted to go back to your first item, uh, just a suggestion, uh, mm -hmm. where budget is being discussed and, you know, money is going to be removed for us for having, you know, people 
in different places and we're going to be using the money ourselves. I think it's important to state what you did, which is, you know, one shot at this because we're using money that we've been using for other things. And the other piece being that, tell them how much land, remind them how much land we take care of and how much land we have. And I have, we have no ranger, we have nobody to take care of this land. So they can't put us in this little box of less and less and less, when my ideal would be to have more and more in terms of going around town and looking at, you know, the many hundreds and hundreds of acres we have and taking care of it. So I put that in there. You know, it's, it's in the wrong direction, but we understand the buying because of COVID and everything else this year. But we hope they won't be asking that in the future. Yeah, I, really I, I also ask them for to, to, to increase the amount of money we can withdraw from the revolving fund every year. Yeah, good idea. Okay, and I'm because, working on that language for um, the town meeting warrant. Uh, right. So we'll, we'll be able to see that. Yeah, Jim. To summarize, to see if I understood this right, because I was a little confused, they they want to reduce the land management budget by ten thousand dollars, but they didn't say we're supposed to cover the, those expenses with things from the revolving fund, right? Well, we got well revolving the fund, only, revolving fund is limited to to um, maintenance and operation of the uh, camp property. It is. So, in other words, what they're saying is that ten thousand dollars that came out of the land management budget to pay Umesh is now going to come out of the revolving. Fund. Oh, okay. And, that, and that's why I've asked for an increase in the amount of money we can withdraw from the revolving fund. Okay, got it. Thank okay, we've done this shuffle before. Yeah, but we, we don't want it to become the standard, okay? I know. No. But, but there is plenty of money in the revolving fund, but, you know, as, you know, we need to be able to take it out. And that's why I asked for the increase to come out of the revolving fund. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, and um, so what I'd like to do now is I, I'd like to take care of our two young people that have put in uh, uh, action sure. items and, and hold off on the first uh, public hearing. And so um, the first is a request to a fixed sign at Stony Brook Conservation Area. And that's from the Girl Scouts, I believe. Yes, I'm um, uh, Megan yeah. and Zoe. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay. So you want to tell us about your project? We'll bring up the presentation. There we go. Could you bring up our presentation, please? There we go. Thank okay. you. Um, Megan, would you like to start? Can you tell Megan might be under Kevin? Um, Megan needs to unmute herself. Um. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes, we yep. can. We uh, can. So, so we are uh, Girl Scout Troop 88052 from Westwood, Massachusetts. And this year we are working on achieving our high silver world award. And we are focusing our project on the prevention of lost pets. And we would like to ask permission to hang some of our flyers in a couple of locations around the town. Next slide, please. So in the year, one out of every three pets go missing. And out of the ones who have no identification, 90% of them don't get returned home. Next slide, please. Our goal with this project is to raise awareness about lost pet prevention. We will focus on how to protect your pet's health, improve your chances of getting your pet back, and what to do if your pet gets lost. So to start, some simple ways to protect your pet. The first one is registration. To get your pet registered with the town, this is mainly for dogs. If a dog is found with the ID tag the town provides, they can look up its owner in the database, resulting in more returned pets. Another easy way to protect your pet is to vaccinate and spay new to them. The outside world is home to many diseases and your pets have never been exposed to. And keeping their vaccinations up to date will prevent them from catching these diseases should they ever get outside. Spaying and neutering will also prevent unwanted litters and future health problems. Next slide, please. To start, microchipping. 
Microchipping is one of the easiest ways to help ensure your pet will get returned home. For about $45, the vet will insert a micro-tracking chip under your pet's skin. This does not harm the pet in any way. If your pets get lost, local animal shelters, vet offices, and animal control can scan your pet for a microchip to find out where it came from and to help get it home. So even with all these preparations, there's still a possibility that your pet will get lost. If it does, here are a couple things you can do. One is to contact your local animal control. They can help look for your pet. Westford Animal Control, you can either call them or they have a form online where you, that you can fill out if you lost a pet or if you found a pet that was lost. Form asks several questions such as where you found the pet and the pet's identification. Another thing you can do is to post it on social media. Social media is one of the most powerful tools in finding pets these days. In Westford alone, we have several Facebook groups, including Westford Mass Lost and Found Pets, Massachusetts Lost Pets, and Missing Dogs Mass. Also, there's Pawboost. Pawboost is a fee-based service that will send out your information on your lost pet to lots of people. Thank you. We hope this helped to keep your pet safe. Um, could you bring up our proposed flyer, please? Thank you. So this flyer is currently legal size. However, we can shrink it down to eight and a half by 11, if that's better. We're requesting to put up signs at the Depot Street and Stony Brook entrance kiosk at East Boston Camps. Trailside Way and Texas Entrance Kiosk and the Shoberbrook Watershed Trail, Cold Spring Road Entrance Kiosk at Stone Arch Bridge Trail, the Tadmuck Road Entrance Kiosk at Mystery Spring, the Lowell Road Entrance Kiosk at Cider Mill Pond, the Plain Street Entrance Kiosk at Grassy Pond, and the Russell Way Entrance Kiosk at Greystone Pond. We know these trails are used by pet owners and dog walkers, and by posting signs that at these kiosks, we are hoping to get this information out to them. Okay. Um, Jim? Um, this, in our presentation materials for tonight, there were uh, several pictures of some of the uh, kiosks. I think they were specifically of the ones around uh, the uh, Stony Brook Conservation Land. And all of those kiosks are getting overloaded with uh, posters and signage. They're impromptu um, lost and found boxes too. There's uh, everything from you know mittens, gloves, hats, uh, dog collars, leash, leashes, things like that hanging on them. It, they're just getting overwhelmed with uh, with materials. In addition, they've got the uh, the rules, the, uh, the the dog owner uh, control dog control rules. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. I, I think we'd be better off reducing the number of posters that are just getting slapped on the front and the back of the uh, of the kiosks around town. And I, I think this is a great um, education program. And I think some of the ideas that they had already with the uh, Westford CAD and the Facebook groups would be good places to put these kind of things periodically over the course of the year. Maybe put them at some of the uh, veterinary uh, uh, clinics in town. They have poster boards uh, inside their, their waiting areas. Um, Westford Cat would probably be uh, able to, to help them put some sort of a presentation together and it could be played several times during the course of the year. All of these are, are great ways to get the word out to people. I, I think putting another poster on, a, on an already overcrowded um, kiosk is just going uh, to make things less readable and, and less uh, observed. I, I think this is a great education program, but I, I think it has to go out via Facebook, Westford Cat, the veterinarian clinics, uh, those kind of things. Um, um, just, just as a comment, uh, Jim, I, I, I know that the, the kiosks up at Stony Brook are full of everything, but so, there's a bunch of the kiosks in other parts of towns that don't have much on them. And so, like the one at Trailside, there's definitely room. You can put it on the inside. You don't have to put it on the outside. We have a key to it. And I don't know if Matt has the keys to some of these kiosks or not. Um, I think they're in the key box. I, I'm key box. quite certain Carol had them organized, so I'll find them. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the kiosks do have room for this the, at the at the you know the, the areas that are not well used, like uh, Stony Brook. So, 
That's just my comment. Marilyn? Two things. Uh, I think it's a wonderful idea in terms of what you are doing. I'm not sure also about the uh, kiosk at the uh, EDC. I, I, I don't think that's the right place. But I had some other thoughts that I hope would be useful. For one thing I know that you had come to, uh, I happened to work at uh, Town Hall, and I know that uh, we put out different things that the public can take right in that vestibule. Right now it's super uh, crowded because of COVID and because people aren't able to come into the building. But just like they were able to take directories and to take uh, the newsletter from Jody Ross uh, each month, I think this is a place where you could have a stack of them. And when people come in to read the notices that are in that little um, vestibule between the street and town hall, they could take you know, a colored paper like this and use it and remember it. I also spoke to Dan Hurd today and told him you were coming before us. I didn't uh, know whether you had, because you have all this information on here, whether you had contacted the animal control officer, but he said he certainly would be happy to talk to you and see if there's anything that he could help with as well. Uh, I thought of places like, you know, with the, the neighborhood stores, like um, on Main Street, and then there's one in Navnasset. Uh, they have, it seems to me they have like a little window, it's not a window, but they have some kind of board outside their stores, and they have people who are, you know, in different businesses that have put things up. It would be another place that you could do, including also the library. I don't know if you've ever gone uh, to the library, and on that very first floor, uh, sort of like the entrance floor when you come in, it's a huge table in back with many, many things that people put out to disseminate. So it was just some other ideas that I had to maybe encourage you in what you're doing, and I think it's a wonderful project. Thank you. Margaret? Uh, um, I would also like to say I, I really commend you for, for doing your research and getting this information, making it available to the, the public. One of the things that struck me as being missing from this is no discussion about leashing dogs when you're taking them out for a walk or someplace unfamiliar, because I think having a dog on a leash is a great way to keep it from getting lost in the first place. And with Westford having a leash law, I think you know that's something that would be good to reinforce as well. That's a point. Any other uh, comments from the commission? Anne's hand is up. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't yes. see her yet. I, I was going to say the same thing that Margaret said, that really we should emphasize the leash law in Westwood because it's part of the town thing. And I agree that there may be better. I think it's a very good project. I like reading through all the things, but maybe the kiosks are not the best place to put them and some of the other places that have been suggested might be better. But the, emphasizing the leash law, I think, is, is very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had something to add. I know I can't, you can't see that my hand is raised. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, um, um, maybe when uh, we register our dogs at the town hall, offering this sort of uh, pamphlet for people when they get their dog tags um, That's a great idea. would be a good addition to, to yeah. this project. After COVID, because we have to mail, you know, but after COVID, sure. Yeah. We actually just delivered about 1,500 flyers to the town clerk that will be sent out with a dog registration. Nice. Well, that's great. Cool. I mean, the whole point of the kiosk is, is that we wanted the information inside the, inside the kiosk and not um, stapled and tacked on all over the place on the outside of the kiosk. And that's the problem we run into here is that if there's room inside some of the kiosk, um, then I don't see it as a problem, but that, but you know, once again, it would have to be done kiosk by kiosk. Obviously at ABC, we got a big problem with flyers. So that's mm -hmm. definitely out. So I, I don't know, I, if, you guys, if you guys want me or Matt to go around and check some of these other remote kiosks to see if there would be room to put a flyer like this inside, I, I'd be glad to volunteer and go and do it. So. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's what I'll do. I'll plan on doing that. And I'll plan on getting back to the commission uh, at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you for your time. Right, Peter. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was great.
Okay, we're going to move on to our next discussion item, which is a proposed Eagle Scout project at Grassy Pond for a viewing platform. Derek Masterson. You there, Derek? Shoot me now. Derek. Yeah. That horse code is way too fast. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, uh, we seem to have some issues with your microphone right now. I will reach out to you for how to call it. Um, I haven't called it, okay. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if you want to take the next, uh, if you want to take the public hearing and. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to our public hearing, uh, um, Billings, Billington 87, uh, Hildreth Street. This is a legal notice under Westwood's non zoning wetlands bylaw, Chapter 171, Westwood Conservation Commission will a public hearing on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021 at 7 30 p.m. by a remote participation to consider requests for determination of activability filed by Brian and Jennifer Billington for the construction of a seven foot eight and a half foot addition to the front of the existing dwelling with 100 feet of the jurisdiction of wetland at 87 Hilbert Street. This is map 16, parcel two. Okay, welcome. Someone here for the applicant? Uh, Jennifer, you'll need to unmute yourself. Ah, there we go. Can you hear us? Can. Can. Hi, good evening. Um, okay. Do you go want ahead, us to ahead. speak about the project? Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, we need to rebuild our front entryway. Um, the the stairs are crumbling. The the door leaks. It's it's a pretty big disaster, in and of itself. Um, when while rebuilding, we're hoping to make it just slightly larger than it is. Um, and put uh, a cover over it so that we do not have the problem we have currently with um, you know snow and ice falling on the step and and freezing on the top landing. So we're hoping to just expand just a little bit um, in in depth and in width. Um, and rather than put in replace the existing stone step structure, it will be um, a composite decking structure. The um, the new entry deck would um, would be within already disturbed ground. There's um, it's mulched all around that area, so we're not really um, you know, septic tank. Yeah, you know, septic far. tank is not far away from that. Um, so it's really just a small expansion to improve and make a safe entry, safe covered entryway. Looks good. It's right at the hundred foot mark. That's what it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got no questions. No questions. Everybody good with this? Yeah. Is there, yep. there, is there much of a uh, slope here, Matt, that they need any kind of uh, erosion control? No, it's fairly uh, flat. Um, they reached out to me when they were um, in the early stages and pulled tape and like the plan. It's, it's, all oh, it's, it's they're they're almost outside of um, the 100 foot buffer to that intermittent stream along Hildreth, okay. um, but it's lawn, um, probably 90 feet of lawn, or fairly flat going across. Okay. okay. So can I? Uh, any questions from the audience on this application? Okay. Seeing none, can I have a motion for a conditional negative? So moved. Second. All in favor? Eric. Yes. Kim. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Noel. Yes. Ann. Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, uh, motion to close the public hearing. I moved. Second. All in favor, Eric. Yes. Jim. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Margaret. Yes. Noel. Yes. Ian? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, you're all set. Uh, talk to Matt about getting the paperwork. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Yep. You too. Good night. Thank you.
Okay, our next uh, is, a public hearing is going to be continued to March 24th for uh, 44 Lawson Road. Can okay. I have a motion to that effect? I move. Second. All in favor, Eric? Yes. Kim? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Uh, Marilyn? Yes. Sorry. Well. <laughs> yes. And Ian? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now we're going to go back to the proposed Eco Scout project for Derek Masterson. Derek, are you there? Derek. I'll keep working with him and trying to get him into the meeting. Okay. okay. All right. Um, our next uh, discussion item is um, uh, file number 3341617, three cursey circle, request to work between December 1st and April 1st. Okay. Uh, hi. Oh, I don't, am I, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear yeah. you. I don't know. Did Matt, are you going to talk first or should I go? Uh, no, I was hoping you guys would. Okay, all right. Uh, my husband's not here. Uh, he unfortunately can't be here, so I'm going to handle this. Um, we do. Um, we have our plan to go forward with a pool installation um, this spring slash summer. Um, we have our permit ready to go, and <clears throat> as of now, um, we are allowed to start work um, April 1st, and we are asking if we can start work March 1st. Um, simply because we've had such a hard time with getting vendors the pool vendor is lined up and we're afraid that if we have any kind of um big weather issue that our other contractors if they get delayed that's going to push the pool vendor out so we're just asking if we can start um site prep on march 1st instead of april 1st Well, there's one issue, and that is the erosion control. I don't know how you're going to put the erosion control in as well as snow in the ground while it's melting. So, I mean, that that would be a concern. Eric, other no, that was pretty much it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have a you know plan for that. The contractor would would install that. Um, you know, I'm sure that that they've dealt with that before. You know, it, it's on our plan to do that. We know that that has to be there. Yeah, well, uh, somehow we're going to have to hear from the contractor how he's going to do that because it's not an easy task to install erosion control with, you know, a foot of snow on the ground. And as that melts, the erosion control is going to be adjusted all the time. So um, we're going to have to hear from the contractor about how he's going to do the erosion control. Okay. All right. Margaret? We're not saying no, though. We're just trying to we're get a little more no. information. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Margaret? Yeah. Well, one of the other things when we talked last fall was I understand you have you have a saline pool. Um, one of the things that came out of the discussion was that the vendor was going to provide information about the pool as to how the filter system works, since apparently um, the way the filter works, it doesn't create any backwash. And one of the concerns I had is if, for example, there's a heavy rain and there's excess water, how does the water get out of the pool? Because we don't want it flowing directly to the wetlands. Right. My understanding is that my husband, I thought he sent something into the commission, if that's the right terminology, um, that we would, you know, if we had a heavy, you know, torrential rain that we knew was coming, we would, we have um, a deal or, you know, the vendor would, pool vendor would work with us to come and take a certain amount of water out of the pool. So we don't have a big, you know, overflow. You know, and that's if we had a heavy rain that we knew, you know, that we could plan for and, and you know, call them up to say we need to have this done. Uh, Margaret, we did receive that information from the um, applicant um, previously when uh, going through this, uh, the amendment process. Um, okay. And the vendor uh, confirmed that there would be no that they there will be, be no, there will be no conditions and no under which charges. There, there are no conditions under which the pool could would be discharging. I don't think so, no. Okay. 
Uh, Mar uh, Marilyn. Uh, I was thinking since it's two more weeks before we have, you know, another meeting, would it be uh, feasible to have that work with them to make sure that you have answers to your questions about erosion controls? You know, that would satisfy him to say, yes, you can start work in a week or two. Mm -hmm. We have to wait for him to, to come back in the middle of March, you know, in the second week in March. Kind of hard for Matt to do that, actually, though, you know, it's okay. it's going to be a function of what it looks like in, in, in early March and, and what the co pool contractor has to say about their ability to put the erosion control measures in such that they can, you know, handle all the snow melt because, you know, as well as I do, it's going to get pretty muddy in the next few weeks. It's that time of the year. Okay. I was just trying to help for that, but that's okay. I get back. So is it okay. timing like scheduling um, that Matt wouldn't be available to discuss that with him or? We should have him on at the next meeting to, to be able to ask him some questions so we can feel good about, you know, what's being proposed so we could say yes. Okay. So you would want our contractor on at the next meeting? Yes. March yeah. Is that, would that be um, March 9th? No, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. March 10th. Second. Yes, March March 10th, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can approve it that night if we feel comfortable with, with what he what he's capable of doing, right? Okay. And plus, hopefully, we'll have some snow melt by then. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, so, you, so we'll arrange with our contractor to be on the call with us so he can explain how he would accommodate and have the erosion control in the, in the appropriate way, satisfying yeah. those conditions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay, good night. How are we doing on the Eagle Scout, Matt? He left as an attendee. I sent an email for a phone number to call in. Derek, are you out there? Guess not yet. Not yet. Hmm. Okay, um, we can move on to our next item, which is a request to uh, name a trail and change the layout of the kiosk at Stony Brook Conservation Area. Um, this is the uh, Western Friends of East Boston Camps. I uh, need to recuse myself, so Eric, you can take this discussion, please. Sure, so who's on? Um, who's here on behalf of the Friends for this uh, This is Martha um, Stokes, are you able to hear me? I am. Wonderful. Uh, I have two items I would like to bring in front of you. Uh, the first is that if you are to look at the map of East Boston Camps, there is a trail called the Unnamed Trail. It's in the northern part of the parcel, and it runs between the Nelson Trail and George Fletcher Trail. And what the Friends is requesting is that we have the ability to name the trail as a fundraiser, which we have done with other items, and the money would return back to the camps. I am in the camps, uh, I would say at least five times a week. And I have been up and over this trail many times. It is quite well established. It's not a deer trail. I have seen people on the trail. And I recognize that across the town of Westford, there are certainly parcels that don't have trails named, but in these Boston camps, they are named. And if you turn up this trail at this time, there's no name and not a, alarmist but if you roll your ankle up there you can't say where you are so it seems to be consistent with the camps to be able to put a name on that trail and that would be one of our requests there's no markers on that trail at all it's not, not at this, it's, it's on the map so if you look at our brochure if you look at the map at the kiosk it says the unnamed trail and it you know if you went back Oh, eight years, it was not that established, but it is very well established now. Um, and I think it would be appropriate to put a name there, partly because, uh, not entirely, but in, in May, as a fundraiser, the Friends of East Boston Camps is hoping to have a COVID-friendly event that would be called the Walk on the Wild Side Challenge, where people would be getting sponsors and walking the trails, and it would be very helpful 
to have a name on that trail as far as giving mileage. But it's there, it exists, it's on the map, but there's no, it's the only spot in East Boston camps that does not have a sign at this time. So let me ask you a question. Is this the only unnamed trail left that you'd be seeking to add a name to? I, as part I of a fundraising am not interested in seeing any more trails named. I, I can tell you there are so many more people in there than I've ever seen. Um, but hopefully this is the end of new trails. And this think I think this one really makes sense to name. Um, it partly, it's on the map. If you look at the map. Well, it, it would also have to be uh, signage put on the trail. No, and I don't even know how to. Part of the purpose was so that somebody would know what trails to send help to. It, they'd have to have a label on it of some sort so they'd know what trail they were on, right? Right. So if someone walked up and rolled an ankle, they could say, this is where I am. They've right. done this before. Say, let's say John Smith uh, wins your bidding uh, uh, auction or whatever. And it's the John Smith Trail. Where, where does where do they find that out? An injured party. I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm missing the question. If, if somebody does get hurt on that trail, correct. How do they? How, and they they call up. Uh, you know, they call nine one one or whatever. How do they know what trail they're on? Well, I'm hoping if they went up the trail and there was a signage on it that if they that's did what, reach out to I'm the saying. fire department. Department, they could say you, this you, is where I am and hopefully the fire department has a map of East Boston camps and could locate them. So this also involves putting up a signage of some sort, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the signs what, go at one, both ends of the trail? I would say yes. One is at uh, the George Fletcher end and the other is on the Nelson end. I, I don't know how familiar you are with the, with the trails. It goes up and over. If you've been up there, there's a TP, perhaps you've seen, that's been there for quite some time. That's the trail I'm speaking of. I'm not trying to create a trail that doesn't exist, but because, as I said, it's already on the map, and we are looking at ways to fundraise, and we are looking at this activity for the month of May, it seems like the logical next step. I like it. Um, I don't have any particular issues two signs against it, Jim. So two two signs, a uh, I, I think some markers if there's any kind of uh, you know the plastic markers that we use in, in the camps and I think that'd be good. Okay. Marilyn? I just wanted to say I had no trouble with this and certainly yeah. Matt can show them exactly what things have to look like. You know as long as they conform to everything that's there in the camp, there's no issue. The signage would all match with what we've had. So it would be consistent that way. Like I said, we would probably use it as a fundraiser um, to raise money for the camps. Yeah. And to make alterations. To so the naming, um, subject to the, yes. I guess, you know, has to be subject to our approval. And, and you know, I'm assuming the friends are going to approve it. What, but I think it should be subject to our approval as well. Correct. That that's okay. some, makes sense. Margaret, Anne, Noel, any comments? This is actually my favorite trail in East Boston camps. It's got an amazing view, um, and it's definitely a well-established trail. Um, so I would be, I'm for it, I would okay, say. Cool. Margaret? Yeah, I just, you know, um, I support it as well. I just, I didn't have anything new to add, so I decided not to add it. That's okay. I know if you're in support, that's good to know. Jim? Uh -huh. So I I'm for it. With, if we put a sign at both ends telling us whatever the name is going to be, your uh, your suggestion, uh, Eric, that we have uh, approval at the, you know, with whatever the name is going to be. And lastly, we should probably ask the, uh, um, Westward Land Preservation Foundation, since we're going to be putting up signs, and this is a, a trail that they may may not be aware of. They're included in the loop. Right. So, so, yeah, yeah, so okay. is the commission good with the request? Yeah, let's take a motion. Okay. With those, uh, can I those to go back then? Margaret or Marilyn? I, I so, 
Are you asking for a motion? A motion. I was. All right, so I make a motion that we uh, accept this request and that we allow a name for that trail. Second. With Jim's conditions. With with everything we've discussed this evening. Okay. okay. Be inclusive. It'll be in okay. the minute. Okay. All those in favor, Jim? Yeah. Marilyn? Yeah. Margaret? Yes. Anne? Yes. Noelle? Yes. And Eric? Yes. Okay. okay. You're grant you your permission. So and thank you very so, much. Thank you. I have one more item to bring in front of you. Okay. Um, and that goes back to the kiosk, which, as has already been brought up to our attention, is completely overladen with information on it. Um, and as you may already know, at the end, right after the holidays, I put up the box that says MAP, Friends of BBC MAP. And I really didn't expect that much activity, given the time of year. And what I did was I put in the brochures with the maps in 25 uh, numbers allotments. And since then, we have gone through over 75, which is kind of exciting. And we have not received seen any on the trails. Like I said, I'm in there for at least five days a week. So people are picking them up. And the other thing I did, I believe it was Noelle's suggestion, I put in the QR code, which I thought was a really good idea. And you know, at some point, maybe we can wean away from the maps and just have the QR code, uh, which brings them to our website, and then they can get the map from there. So that was a, that was a wonderful suggestion. But what it also made us re realize when we were talking as a organization that people really do take the time to look at this kiosk, which I was a little surprised about. And like I said, with COVID, there have been quite a few people in there. So we started thinking that um, as an organization, we have our fundraisers and we have one in the fall, which is sort of a give back to the community with our um, the food and music and games. And then we usually have something in the spring, which we're not able to have our gala what we do, but we're discussing having a walk on the wild side challenge where over the course of month of May, you would create sponsors and you would walk the trails and track it. And we would try to fundraise that way. And it seems like that the people we're reaching out to, we want to go back to our base and the people that are already there. And it seems like if people are coming up to this sign, if there's some way I can sit down with someone and look at the information that is on this sign and create a space for Friends of East Boston Camps to say, you know, support us. We have this activity coming up. And I, I, it just seems like the obvious place to put it. It doesn't have to be big, but I think the front side, and as you can see, there's, there's COVID information there, there's carry in and out, there's dog issues. But I wondered if there's a way, I, I think I tried to do a hand drawing of sort of divvying it up. So you have the map, you have place for other information. I, I'm a wonderful artist, but just a small place to say, this event is coming up and just put it on people's radar. Um, it goes, like I said, if we're successful as a fundraiser that goes back to the camp and it was something that we would change up as we go through the year and, and let people know what we're doing. Jim, can't un hear you. unmute yourself. All the um, the signs that are in there, there now, shown in the picture right there, as well as the other side of the uh, the kiosk, they're not going to fit in inside where you've drawn your sketch. So which ones come away? So I'm I am not at this point addressing the signs outside of the kiosk. I am looking strictly at the map. And on the far left, there's a section of information. On the top right, there's a section of information. And I didn't know if there was a place on the bottom left within the glass that is protected where we could put something. I mean, I, I'm just trying to think about what helps the property. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to make it a little bit nicer there, not, not add more and more to it. Um, uh, right. It's not going not gonna to fit. There's already too many signs there. Maybe we need to expand the kiosk. You know, it's two pieces. So. I wonder if there's a way, if, if whoever is responsible for the kiosk, I would be more than willing to sit down and look at the layout. So it's, it's more logical as far as rules and regulations, a map, 
in current events or, or just make it so it's something when you look at it, it, it's more, it's not as a haphazard. I mean, I like the idea. And, but I hear Jim's concern, so maybe there is a better way that we can organize the kiosk and maybe have an additional location where we can put some of this information. Because so I think it's important for the friends to be able to have a space to talk about upcoming events so we can raise funds, you know, for East Boston camps. I mean, that only makes sense. But Jim's right. Right now, it's 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 kind of haphazard, and just adding something more to it, um, without a better idea of how we should do it. Even though you provided something to us, you know, maybe we just need to think this out a little more first. Eric, I'd um, be happy to take a look at the uh, go out, take a look, and see. Um, what in terms of the conscoms issue as marcia has um labeled it as what might be already <laughs> redundant in terms on another sign and it's just bigger or um what it, or if there's anything that's outdated um i'd be happy to take a look at that in the in before yeah. the commission's next meeting um and we can kind of follow back with this and i would um, be willing see. if you're interested i'd be more than willing to meet with you when you go if, oh, I, that's, if um, that's appropriate yeah no that's uh, th there's plenty of space at east boston camps i think we can find six feet apart <laughs> yeah, really marilyn uh I, I i like that whole idea uh the other thing i'm thinking is you know uh, maybe we've sort of outgrown this kiosk and what it looks like and maybe just yeah. moving it a little further it doesn't help marshall right the second but it's the kind of thing is this the way we want it to look or do you have a double i don't know what it looks like in other places have we gotten to the place where we need a larger space or two sides, not you know, not just front and back, but I mean another piece beside it. I just think that might be looked at, might be a great project for a scout, I'm not sure. But we may have outgrown this, which was a wonderful idea and still is, and we need to do something else but in good taste. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? An extension of this. Anyone else from the commission have any other comments? Any questions from the audience? I don't see any. Yeah, maybe you could take a peek at this and, and maybe we can figure out a way that, uh, you know, maybe a better layout that we can have some of this additional information. I mean, it does make sense for the friends to be able to uh, let folks know of upcoming events, especially if, I mean, if the folks who are coming out here are using East Boston camps and droves, uh, appreciate the site, you know, they're going to want to know about upcoming events and, you know, we certainly, you know, want them to know about them. It only benefits, you know, the camp. So it's 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 a benefit to the community. Could be on the next. That, 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 Eric, that really calls out for a uh, like almost a separate kiosk. If there was a matching one adjacent to this, and it was all the friends announcements, because they you know they have the spring, the fall activities, yeah. um, announcements about the trails, things like that. All of those would be great ideas. But what we got now is a disaster. Yeah, no, I get that, Jim. Yes. I, I, I hear you, but I, I think there's maybe a way that we can accommodate and, and, and find a way to move forward, and maybe it's time for, you know, a new way of looking at this. Right. Uh, Margaret and then Marilyn. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking thinking about some of the things I used to see when I went to the mall is maybe instead of two-sided, you now have a triangle, you know, right. a, a three-sided structure with, a, with a, a roof over it, and then you can maybe more better organize what information is provided on each side i mean i i think we're all willing to to to, to listen and, and see what could be presented and find a way marilyn i see it as two pieces i see it as the piece to help marcia now and these uh boston friends to uh perhaps find a way to put their information in and also to further explore what we do with this kiosk so it isn't an eyesore and we make it, you know, we make it the kind of thing that we need because we've grown. This is a really good problem to have, guys. Sounds this like a good scout project. Whatever, but now we should look at it and say, okay, who wants this? This is what we've got. You know, it's up for bid out there. What do yeah. we want with that? I just think it's two separate things. So first, yeah. the most problem gets solved with Matt. And then the second problem is how do we take care of this kiosk? to accommodate the growth that we happily have at East Boston Camp. Okay. I think that sounds wonderful. I, I think that, um, I think you're, com you're completely correct. 
There is sort of the immediate, how do we try to uh, raise awareness of the event we're hoping to do in May, but also the long-term of creating something that isn't an eyesore and has all these hosh posh things attached because we now know that people are going and looking at it. So um, it's, it's kind of a, an exciting opportunity. Marsha, okay. I'll reach out tomorrow to schedule a time when I'll be heading out there. Okay, great. Thank you well, very thank much. You, thank, thank you so you. much for your time and your efforts on behalf of the community. Thank you. Anybody else have anything before we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, Peter? Hey, Matt, uh, do we have the Boy Scout? Derek, I think you're on the line. It's on. Hello? All right, yes, all right. we can hear you. Third time all right. Time. All right. So, my name is Derek Masterson, and I am a Boy Scout in Troop 437 Westford, and I am working on my Eagle Scout project. My Eagle Scout, uh, next slide, please. So, what the, pro what the project is, is it's going to be a viewing platform for uh, anybody with, it's anybody with disabilities. Uh, whether in, the, in a wheelchair or um, they have trouble walking with walkers or they have canes and it will be right out uh, right next to the parking lot and they can easily access the platform to view the pond from a safe distance um, and they get on and off easily so they don't have to walk through you know, hills and logs and leaves and other tripping hazards that we have on the trail. So here's another picture. Um, so it's going to be between the two trees that are at each end of the picture, but it's going to be the platform. Um, it's about 15 feet, and there's some measurements. So it's 15 feet away from that post as well. Um, and the, the platform will be about, uh, I think you said eight feet at uh, when I met with Mr. Salem there last week. Um, I'm also thinking about making it 10 feet, uh, 10 by 10 feet. So the uh, wheelchairs have the ability to move around more easily rather than it being eight feet. So this is what the deck will look like. Um, I use this with a Lowe's deck builder. And so it's, uh, the railings, we haven't, I haven't thought about uh, railings yet. I haven't finalized anything. So the railings might look a little bit different, but the deck will be the same. Um, the ramp onto it will be about 10 feet, I believe, and or maybe, maybe a little bit less actually. And then the actual deck will be 10 by 10 or eight by eight. Uh, I haven't, decided on one of those yet. So, next slide, please. So here's another graphic of the deck. So we have the yellow gate on one side and it'll be a flat ramp uh, into the deck and it's 10 by 10 um, is how we have it here. And the pond is off to the left. Maybe between these two trees, um, it'll be angled towards the pond. Um, rather than it being straight. Um, so, next slide, please. So here we have um, some standard wheelchair dimensions. Um, and this is where I got the idea for eight feet wide. Um, so it's about three feet or so, uh, the wheelchairs are, and they could each have a couple feet for maneuvering. Um, was brought up by my scoutmaster to make it 10 feet um, so they have more maneuverability so you can have so that way you can have wheelchairs with maneuverability and maybe someone with a walker on there as well um, next slide please so here is the same graphic that we showed it's just going to have the wheelchairs how it would look like on here so evenly spaced apart, that's how it is. Got yeah, next slide. So this is this is a side view uh, without railings. I've again I haven't finalized anything with railings yet. 
um, but as the ground starts to drop off um, and starts to go into a hill towards the edge of the pond, we'll have supports um, on the end holding it up. Next slide. So these would be the concrete pillars with the two by 10 beams. Um, so that's you know, what it'll look like. Well, probably have six to nine uh, concrete pillars, maybe a couple in the middle. Uh, next slide. And then we'll, we'll have the joists on as well, and we'll put the actual decking on. Um, and it was another thing that came up a lot with the railings, when you finalize the railings, if it will be eight by eight or 10 by 10 within the space of the railings, or if it'll be eight by eight or 10 by 10 uh, outside the railings. So the railings will take up a couple inches on the deck. Um, and I haven't thought about that yet. So I don't know, but that is my presentation. Um, yeah, um, just a couple of things up front. You're going to have to talk to the building uh, commissioner on some of the specs on this, and he'll probably be able to guide you as to how wide this should be and also about the railings. He's got some specific requirements needed for the railings. Uh, and my other question is, Matt, is, it, is this going to be outside the 100 foot buffer so he doesn't have to do a filing with us? Yes, we pulled tape uh, when we were out there last Wednesday or Thursday before the snowstorm. Um, and he, the, the front edge of the deck is at about 102 feet from the bank of Grassy Pond. So um, it was a very fortuitous uh, location he picked um, yep. to stay outside of uh, wetlands, uh, the Wetlands Protection Act jurisdiction. Yeah, Marilyn? Um, I'm just wondering by any chance, have you, uh, uh, are you aware on disabilities in town because it would be a project that I think you should tell them that you're contemplating doing. They might have some suggestions as well. They certainly would be thrilled to know that you were doing this in town. If not, I can provide Matt with a contact for that committee. Would you be interested? Uh, yes, that would be great. And I, I haven't contacted any of them, any, uh, anybody in the Commission on Disabilities directly, but Mr. Harmon, who brought me, who gave me the idea for the project, has talked with several members, and they they're all thrilled about the project. I think it would be really great, great if idea. you had a direct contact with them as well, in, in case there was anything that they'd like to suggest, you know, uh, to you as well. But I just think I just think it would be a nice connection. It would be a first time piece, I think, in town, and this is all good. Peter, I had something to... Yeah, no, well, go ahead. So there was a, not the last meeting because I wasn't there, but the meeting before it was mentioned that the um, the sidewalk on Plain Road may end up being in the woods so that a part of Grassy Pond could end up being handicap accessible through the um, sidewalk. Um, yeah. Is this going to be perhaps a part of that? Is that going to run into that sidewalk so that it can be accessible from the sidewalk? I, I, think, um, the I think the location he's picked out, it will be fine because the sidewalk, when it gets down towards the parking area, it has to curve up into the flat area of the parking area. <laughs> so it would probably be, you know, on the, on the street side of this. Okay. Jim? A couple of things. There was the diagram that showed a, um, a gate at the end of the ramp. I assume that's just a, a vestige of the tool. There's not going to be any gate, right? Yeah, that's just how it laid it out. There will be no gate there. It will be open. Okay. And w will that ramp actually consume any of the parking area, or will it just go up to the edge of the parking area? Um, I, I believe it will be up to the edge of the parking area. Um, Okay, I'd be, I'd be good with that. I just don't want to take up any of the parking area with the ramp. If the ramp could start um, beyond where cars can park, that would be perfect. And then maybe we could put a, uh, a handicap spot adjacent to the area where the ramp is. 
and maybe that would also take into account Noel's uh, idea there of, of uh, having some sort of an access to that uh, proposed sidewalk. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And lastly, I uh, reiterate what, what Peter had said with the building inspector, and I would I'd maybe check with the engineering department too, because you have some pretty long spans there between some of your concrete pillars, and there's a lot of requirements for ADA compliance. It'll be not just the, the width, but the slope of the ramp, um, rails, railings, how high the railings have to be or how low they have to be, and so those kind of things. But they'd be able to fill you in on all the details and what, what kind of uh, parameters you need to follow. Okay, any other uh, questions from the commission? Any questions from the audience? Bill's oh, got a hand Harmon. raised. Mr. Well, I would just like to comment that I had an opportunity to meet with Derek on site. And I became impressed that he's a capable person. And also he is a, uh, being backed up by a scoutmaster and others, uh, adult leaders who are very capable too. So I have a very good feeling about the success of this project. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So I, I think we can take an emotion, uh, have a motion to initially approve this, but he obviously he's got to come back to us when he gets all his final plans. Absolutely. Yep. So can I have a motion to uh, give an, uh, uh, an initial approval to this with the uh, subject to him coming back with his final plans? So moved. Second. All in favor, Eric? Yes. Kim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. And Ann? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, Derek, thanks very much. We'll look forward to seeing your final uh, version of it. Good, thank you. Okay, thank you. have a good night. Okay, Matt, you're gonna update us on unauthorized AT ATV activity at Stony Brook Conservation Area? Yes, uh, last, uh, it was over the President's Day weekend, I uh, received numerous emails from uh, residents who were out at East Boston camps, um, there looked to be ATV activity um, entering the property from the Stony Brook school um, parking lots. And I spoke with acting deputy chief, uh, Ron Plaskis, um, about what can be done. Um, and his recommendation was if residents do either see the activity or um, see the activity after the fact um, to call the police department's non-emergency line and uh, provide a report that this was going on. Um, at the time, it was before the snowstorm, uh, the snow last weekend, and he informed the officers who are out and about town um, to be mindful of uh, any ATV activity out there. Additionally, I have reached out to the environmental police just uh, again to let them know that this is happening. It is public lands and it is unauthorized ATV usage. Um, and if uh, I think uh, there was comments about increasing signage at the entrance off of the old trolley line, I don't, I'm not 100% sure that's going to uh, be effective in terms of uh, curtailing this activity, um, but I'd be open to the commission's uh, thoughts. Any comments? We have put up signs before and they mysteriously disappear. Disappear. Yeah. What we need okay, is the public and public to make the phone calls to the police department, like Matt said, that's, that's really what we need. That is right. the key, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, call, call the police right away when you see something going on there. Yeah, absolutely, they'll follow up. They've been really good about following it up, so. Yeah, uh, I was, I was, I was uh, appreciative of uh, Acting Deputy Chief Plaskis' uh, response and his eagerness to, um, keep his keep the officers informed and um have, make sure they were in the loop and on the lookout um, yeah so. okay okay 
Uh, next is discussion of rental use of East Boston and Camps at Stony Brook Conservation Area. I think this is coming up because they're getting phone calls about uh, looking for reservations, Matt, I would assume already, right? Yes, uh, we've had uh, numerous uh, people reach out to the rec department to rent either the dining hall. Uh, one of them was for an Eagle Scout Court of Honor. Uh, second one was uh, from a local Girl Scout troop looking to do kind of an out, outside activity skills um, day, excuse me. And uh, I wanted to get the commission's thoughts on what, what um, I mean, after the wedding last um, late summer, early fall, um, what, get, yeah, that can't got canceled. Um, what the commission's feelings are on uh, holding, having events there, or, you know, is it more, or is the commission more appreciative of um, them being day events that are there and then gone, um, no overnights, um, again, looking to the commissions. Yeah, the, 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 pro the problem here is if they're gonna be using buildings, we have to clean them. And, you know, we, we have one guy, you know, that does this. And so, you know, it, it's, and then we could, have, we, we have to check with the Board of Health to see what's gonna be required of us of, of, about cleaning the inside of buildings. I don't have a problem with stuff being uh, scheduled on the outside in the open air. Um, but once again, the, the problem is the use of the buildings. And uh, I don't see how we can do, make a decision on this unless we get some input from the Board of Health on what's gonna be required on cleaning the buildings. Okay. Right? Yeah, that Very would true. Be, that we should do that first. Yeah, so, exactly. That's what yeah. Peter's saying, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, even, in, even in the outdoor gatherings, there's still the limitations by the, the state as far as yeah, I'm absolutely. Possible. Yeah, yeah, but I don't have a problem I, if they think, follow the outdoor limitations of the state that they could we could schedule an outdoor event. Yeah, if we had that in our hands, so we weren't liable because this we went according to what we had. Yeah, yeah. I, those restrictions are going to be changing continuously, probably for the next six months or so. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can't do it. <laughs> you know, it's a nice thought, but. Uh, well, let's first get, uh, uh, let's ask the uh, Board of Health for what, what the current recommendations are for cleaning a building. If we rented out a building, what, what we have to do to clean it after, they, after they, it was used. Matt, get that in writing. Matt, get yes. it in writing. We have that as a guide. Yep, and I will make sure to include it in uh, your next packet. We'll Perfect. kind of continue this discussion to two weeks, and um, yeah. I'll reach out to the health department so, and get something. Yeah that identifies right. what the... And so until then, I would just say, don't schedule anything. I agree. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think that's the safest oh, wow. It's a moving hold. Yeah. I think so. Okay, great. Um, ratify emergency certificate for Franklin, 31 Bridge Street. Can we do that? Let's do it. Okay, and a motion. Yeah, second. All in favor, Eric? What was yes. this for him to do? Is this the stuff that Just was written up like a year ago? Okay. No, this was for um, one of the culverts underneath the westernmost prop, the westernmost parking area. The um, concrete culvert collapsed yes. and yeah, opened up um, during the heavy rains that we had December, January, um, and when maybe February even. So, um, and at the last meeting, he discussed about looking to repair it. Um, and so, uh, issued an I'm kind of, I'm kind of concerned and, about what's going to actually happen. I, I, I do recall him telling us about that. Now I understand what it's right. for, but I have no idea what he's going to do to fix it. Right. And so about likely to do. And in terms of the, um, conditions of approval, um, he has to let me know ahead of time, you know, when he's going to be starting work and so I can come out and look. Um, and, you know, this is an emergency certificate for a fix. And if it's, you know, um, in another two, three months when the weather gets nice, um, he discussed even looking at other portions of that same kind of uh, the culvert system to see what if if there are more portions that are 
um, failing that it need to be re repaired. Because if it is, I mean, he's he's before the commission with a notice of intent for you know work to, to uh, stabilize the clean up the property, stabilize the property. Um, so if it needs to occur, um, we can make sure that it's getting improved at you know through that. Given that this is an underground underground culvert area that he's going to be working on. It, we're going to have to have the uh, engineering department look at it. I, I just don't, I don't have confidence that uh, um, Mr. Franklin by himself would be able to execute a, a good repair on an underground uh, culvert. He, so uh, under, under, under our, our rules and regulations, Jim, um, these emergency t certificates, um, we've given the authority to the resource planner to do these along with whoever else he requires, whether it's engineering, or the building okay. commission or whatever. So this is really in Matt's hands. We, we've given him the authority to, to do this, okay? Okay, and Matt, you'd be talking with someone in engineering uh, with yeah, Bobby, whatever, plan, whatever, whatever plans you get from Mr. Franklin before he starts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we just need to ratify this so he can- Okay, got it. Take a vote. Work with Matt and get it fixed. So all in favor, Eric? Yes. Jim? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Uh, Margaret? Yes. Will? Yes. And Ann? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Okay. Um, we have minutes from January 13th. I have no okay. problem. Anybody have corrections? No. No corrections? No. Nope. Great. And I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor, Eric? Yes. Kim? Yes. Uh -uh, Marilyn? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Uh, Noel? Yes. Ian? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, I think that's everything. Anybody else got anything else they need to bring up? Nope. Okay. Nope. Our next meeting is on March 10th. So um, Excellent. Hopefully we'll, have, we'll have a little snow melt by then. Huh? I hope so. Hope so. Hope so. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Eric? Yes. Jim? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Margaret? Yes. Noel? Yes. Ian? Yes. Are we meeting and tomorrow? Yep. One, we to, one thing to sign, right? Yep, one thing to sign. Um, the picnic table's cleared off, but there's still a lot of snow around it, so I'll come back out with the clipboard again. So. Okay. okay. Right, we'll, see we'll see you then. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.